Yo, what is up, you guys? Welcome back for another Dre and Jay review. I'm DeAndre. I'm Javante. And today we're going to be reviewing the first episode of Star Wars The Bad Batch. Uh, pre premiered a couple weeks ago on Disney+. Plus. Um, so The Bad Batch is about Clone Force 99, which, you know, is the defective clones that, you know, follows five defective clones, um, you know, in the series who have somewhat enhancements. I mean, you have Wrecker, who has enhanced strength. You have Tech, who, you know, is smart. Echo was a regular clone who, after being captured and what we thought presumed dead, he was rescued in the last season of the Clone Wars mm -hmm. and decided to join um, Clone Force 99. You have Hunter, who is exceptional at tracking and is the leader of the group. And then you have Crosshairs, who's an exceptional uh, sharpshooter. So, series pits up with those clones, um, and it kind it takes place during, um, you know, uh, basically what all Star Wars fans would like to remember, uh, forget, which is Order sixty six. Um, you get to see it on screen again. Mm -hmm. Follows another Jedi. Uh, I'm trying to think her name. It's like eighty or, I forgot. But anyway, it's Kanan Jarrus's master uh, in the series. Mm -hmm. Kanan Jarrus. Uh, a very you know prominent character in the rebels uh series so and he was voiced by the same voice actor freddie prince which i kind of thought that was kind of odd because i mean his, his character looked like a little kid um and freddie with it just didn't match with his voice acting like mm -hmm. but i understand like why they wanted freddie prince because they want people to know like oh that is kane and jars like when they hear the voice and everything so you know i don't really yeah, I'm, I won't complain too much about it. It's just, it's something that I kind of noticed and, you know, yeah. just felt like. Um, but yeah, it was just, it's emotional scene again. I mean, just with the whole music playing and, and all that, you just hate Order 66. It's, it's just a very fucked up situation with, throughout the galaxy because you, you have all the clones and all the, um, you know, Jedi and clones who think we're about to win. We're about to win this war. And, you know, it just... Anakin's fault. Bro. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it is Anakin's fault. I mean, if Mace Windu would have promoted him no, to, no, no, and let, let him try to do that, don't do that, don't do that. <laughs> the whole thing don't do that. Go but, ahead, uh... don't do that. I'm lying, <laughs> but, I'm lying, that boy. But um, so yeah, the first episode, I mean, just hi highlights. I felt like visually, it's great. It was carried on from the last season. Uh, it kind of makes me wish that they would go back and like redo some of the seasons just with you know the new um mm -hmm. visual effects i mean i'm not saying i actually wish it but it's it's just really cool to see how the visual effects are now compared to where the clone wars originally started mm -hmm. um and yeah i felt like the story was really good it, it was you know a jump from um you know scene to scene i, I didn't, wasn't really bored throughout it actually felt less than an hour yeah, in a way to me so um but yeah i mean let you you want any thoughts um, I enjoyed the episode. Um, coming into it, we kind of had an idea who these characters were, so it wasn't that much of a real like, um, you know, who are these characters trying to learn learn to like them and stuff like that. I mean, kind of knew a little about them, not that much, but we kind of saw that the, the team chemistry and how they work together and stuff like that. And um, I love how Star Wars and Dead Filoni and um, uh, my guy John Favreau and all of them. They really do mesh all these stories very well into what the movies have done and what the other shows have done. So it all connects. You know what I mean? It, feel like, it really does feel like one universe, which I think is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and I love the character. I mean, I, I think this this clone, um, I'm, clone army 99, where we should uh, figure out. <laughs> um, I think they're, they're cool characters. They kind of remind me of like some Ninja Turtles. Like, they all have different personalities. You know what I mean? You have some that are kind of hard-headed, it's like that. You got your, you know what I mean? You got, I, I like it. And I enjoy seeing, I'm not, I never really liked, I don't know who my favorite is. I don't really have a favorite out of the clone. I mean, if I had a favorite clone, it would be Commander Wolf. Like, out of this group, I really don't know about my favorite yet. But I really have grown, Hunter has really grown on me in this episode. Like, you see him as a leader and, you know, he really, truly is a leader. Like, you can, you see why he's the one that's in charge. And then seeing, um, for me, it was cro like Crosshairs. Like, I mean, Crosshairs was always like the character uh he didn't really stand out to me and like when he was in the original uh clone wars like the last season mm -hmm. but i was like okay i fucked with hunter and, and wrecker um i fucked with those two but then crosshair has actually really jumped out at me with this oh know, yeah for sure yeah for sure so. um i agree um i'll say also that um seeing camino again is dope 
and getting a better idea of um, how all this became to be where clones were no longer used, I guess, in this first episode, we kind of get an idea, like, mm-hmm. you know, can we see Admiral, um, not Tarkin. Oh, yeah, it's uh, Admiral Tarkin. Admiral, Admiral Tarkin. At that point, I mean, he's he's known as Grand Moff Tarkin, but I yeah. guess in the show, he's Admiral I guess I, I would say Admiral. Admiral Tarkin, we see him come... And he's trying to test out the clones so like that. I think it's a dope episode to see like the characters and to grow with these characters and see kind of like we kind of see some transformation with crosses as you said and see like the the whole thing about we said right at the beginning with the tensions between them two. Yeah, yeah. About, like, like I, I kind of knew that he was gonna be like you know go away from the drooper. I well I didn't I didn't. It's, well, they explained it though. They said that the inhibitor chip is in all of them. It's just some of them have a some of them, stronger yeah. than others. Well, I I just because like when you watch the show and you see like the promotion and everything, you think the team is gonna be together the whole series, nah, and nah, then I knew I you know this episode, which I mean, of course we're we're gonna talk spoilers because I mean shit, it's only an hour. Um, but in this episode, crosshairs they ended up you know um enhancing his inhibitor chip and making him after they realized after that they he realized. had he had actually tried to disobey and didn't want to do but hunting them rest of them like oh we're not gonna kill these people he was yeah. all for it at first so they enhanced the Good stuff and so changed whole follow what is yeah and he changed his whole uniform and everything crosshairs is dope i, I like the character I, i've you really he really does grow on you because you see like i don't think he's even a bad guy i just think he's a man who's following orders who's a strictly like military gen- like, military guy who wants to stay, stand by a code now is he enhanced because of the Hinberg chip? Yes, but he's just doing his or he's doing his job. He's a like, good soldier to follow orders. I think Hunter and them, being that they are deformed clones, they have their own personalities so, like they're more they're more a little more, you know, they're gonna do what they want to do. You know what I mean? So I have to think it just comes out I don't think he's a bad guy actually. But also like, I'm not gonna lie, I thought <laughs> when uh Crosshairs was calling out Hunter, like in uh when they were returning mm-hmm. from meeting Saul Guerrero, I thought Hunter and them were gonna fight. I thought he was gonna hit him with that Caesar, how Caesar did Cobra in Planet of the Apes. Oh, no. Like, did you question my authorities? They had that fight, that brawl. His ass. They had that brawl in the the lunch lunchroom though. But, yeah. No. And Omega, we we mentioned we uh, introduced this character. She's adorable. Yeah, we introduced this character named Omega. Um, she's adorable. She's a cool character. You you don't hate her. You see her. You're like, okay, interesting. Let's see where this goes. And the more you you see her, in the, the more like you see her on the show, and like in the, the first episode, you're like, okay, I kind of like this character. So I was happy to see her go with the the team and stuff like. Yeah, that. I was yeah, happy definitely. To see that. And I mean, there's also like moments where like it, you just see like um, perfect tie-ins to the Clone Wars series and just either the Clone Wars or the movies, like the droid that Omega was with. Mm-hmm. That's the same droid that uh, was helping Fives during yeah. his whole ep- episode arc. Um, you know, with the whole inhibitor chips. And then how they had Anakin and Obi Wan, like they showed the scene where um, they're trying to capture Grievous, mm-hmm. which is yeah, in Revenge which of the Sith. The movie, yeah. So I think that sure. was really cool. Um, and like you said with Omega, I think it's awesome to see a, a kind of a, a new character, um, you know, as adorable as her lover. But it's it's one of those things where like it kind of copies the Mandalorian a bit, it just does. because like it has like that father and daughter child, or child yeah. figure. You know, going through the galaxy together. Although this one, she has like four fa- fathers at this point. Yeah, you know, it's like four. It's like three men and a baby, except it's four clones and a, a well, little, smaller clone. I look at, I look at it like that. See, I, I look at it more like a sister because, like, she is like them. They don't know how yet, but she is just like them. So, like, it's kind of like a, like a little baby sister that they're trying to like teach. We'll also learn about her and trying to like make it all work. You know what I mean, it kind of could be a father like daughter relationship too. But I look at it more like a sister because she's like them. And she wants to be like them. She knows them. Think about when we first see her, probably she's like, oh, I know all you. Like, you know us? And like, yeah. And she yeah. their own names, stuff like that. So she always, you know what I mean? It's a nice, genuine moment. You feel like a real connection between her and the team. So like, it doesn't feel forced. It doesn't feel like, um, I really want her. I don't want to see her character. Like, wherever she's on screen, I get happy. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's see what Omega's doing. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, you love, you start to like her. You really like, mm-hmm. care for that character. And also another thing that you really like to see um, in this episode is just like the turnover from the Clone Wars to now the you know the the Republic to the Galactic Empire. Yeah. Like you see how the clones act. Like they act more like aggressive Bitch. and hostile towards people. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, first off, I love the whole showing Palpatine and the whole message that he mm-hmm. had in Revenge of the Sith. That was another tie-in that was great. But yeah, you just really start to see how the, how the Empire unfolds and how you can see why like people you know, defected from the Empire or were against it because you see how they're trying to treat, um, you know, Tarkin sends them to go wipe out what's supposed to be separatists, but it ends up being a rebellion by Saul they Guerrero. Think they think it's droids. Yeah, so. <laughs> ain't no droids. You know, yeah, I think I think that's really cool. I think that's why you kind of like Omega's character in a way um, because you kind of know that 
with this whole change in the galaxy, and you know, you have um, all this. I would I would say change, bad energy, whatever you want to call it. You have a character like Omega who's new to all this, and mm-hmm. she brings kind of this light and this hope to the team as they're going through this this new change. So I think that's that's something that her character will bring on the show. But yeah. um, okay, I see that. I see yeah, that. and visually, my favorite shot of the show was her in the ship at the end when they're about to go to, through hyper uh, hyperspace hyperspace and you see like the reflection from her eyes. Mm-hmm. And, I don't First know. I just, I just, yeah, I just feel like, you know, I, t- I look at that and I think of, any kid watching Star Wars for the first time and falling in love with it. Like, that's what that shot kind of means to me when I see it. Like, I, I just thought it was amazing. So, I'd rate this episode out as, you know, A+. plus. It was great. A great first episode uh, for the series. I'm excited to see, you know, the future episodes that take place. I mean, I've, I've, I was a big fan of the Clone Wars series. So, seeing this, um, you know, yeah. kind of just matches my expectations. But, yeah, credits to Dave Filoni for... You know, helping Star Wars fans, bring, giving them uh, another, giving them more avenues uh, for more storytelling in, within the Star Wars universe. You know, with the universe that was built by George Lucas, and uh, you know, you have Dave Filoni, John Favreau. So credit to those guys for sure. I definitely agree. I can't say any better. He said it perfectly. Um, so I'm, I give it an A as well. I give it a, I give it an A. It is the first episode, but it was a great first episode. You know, it goes by so fast. You're like, oh man, I didn't expect it, but. Um, you know, Star Wars when we start, I always say Star Wars, man, when when Star Wars gets done right, man, it can really be something special and something amazing, man, that a lot of things can't touch. And I, I still think that with this, man, and, you know, I think this is, goes to the fact that people talk about we can't have new characters. And, I mean, you know, these characters take place in a, in a universe we already know during the Clone Wars, but these are new characters just that are created and that people already love. You know what I mean? Just like Baby Yoda and, or Grogu, I would say, not Baby Yoda. Um <laughs> Same thing. So I just love seeing Star Wars have new characters come in, new creativity, new minds coming in, giving their their what they know and what they love, and putting that on the screen. I think it's been done amazingly by uh, John Favreau and Dave Filoni, as DeAndre stated. And we got to get to the OG, the grand the grandmaster of it all, George, George Lucas. Lucas yeah. Credit on his name. So <laughs> much love, to those guys. Yep. Oh, quick thing we want to point out. I don't like how they whitewashed uh, <laughs> uh, Kanan. Really? I don't know. Like, uh, like I think what people were saying was the fact that he was on a desert planet. That's why he looked so much darker in the Rebel series. I don't know. I just felt like, like when I when I saw him, like if it wasn't for the voice and like knowing Kanan and like knowing his master, I would have thought that was Cal Kestis because that motherfucker looked more like Cal Kestis than he. Did. Well, also he was on a snow planet though. I mean, yeah, but he looked white, had red hair. It just it it it, it gave me Cal Kestis vibes. I mean, I see that. I I'm not gonna defend what they're. I don't. I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know. think. That, yeah, I don't think I, it was like. I think when I look at. I, I looked at it as like, oh, it's the snow and the red hair. I guess I, was, I thought about like when we see him in Rebels, he's already a grown man, which the Empire don't want him more Jedi, so he kind of has to change his whole appearance, kind of in a way. Yeah. But you could be right. Also, they could have just whitewashed it. But I don't think Disney would do that. In yeah, I don't, I don't, that's why. That, that's why I was saying like I think they were um, trying. They were like they explained like it's because like he was living on a desert planet all those years, so that's why he got a tan. Maybe. Or so I don't know. Maybe. But I don't know. That Skywalker New Hope got a little tan on him. Yeah, that's true. Tatooine. Yeah, I mean. But yeah, that was just something that pointed out to me. I was like, "Is that Cal Kestis for a second? Then when he started talking, I saw his master. I was like, "Okay, that's yeah." Good thing though. Nice way to intro uh, to emerge everything and bring everything together. Nice way to put it all together. Yeah, for sure. Well, all right, guys, that'll be all for this review of The Bad Batch Episode 1. If you like this review, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and be sure to tune in for more. Also, post comment down below your thoughts on Bad Batch Episode 1. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, that'll be all. All right, you guys, I'm DeAndre. I'm Javante. Take care. Mm-hmm.